that means we can get going. Okay, so uh, we're B Karma CBD, uh, or rather we're, we're um, Paula and Craig, and I uh, would like to welcome you to the transforming power of CBD and the hemp miracle. So we've put miracle in inverted commas there because um, it has various con connotations, but we think we think it's um, its applications are miraculous, and we'll explain why during this podcast, won't we? We will. We'll be doing our very best to, to explain and, and excite you to share the message with as many millions of people as you possibly can throughout the whole of this morning. So. Let's see, what, what are we going to um, discuss or, or present this morning? So we're going to do our best to reveal the parts of the real history or her story of hemp and CBD that we've discovered so far, and hopefully restore its rightful place as a natural miracle technology to save the environment for the next seven generations and beyond. So we believe it's really that important. And we say restore its rightful place rather than... Um, present its a place for it because it was one of the earliest plants ever cultivated by humans, if not the earliest plant ever cultivated by humans. So we're talking about restoration of rightful place here. Okay, so that went backwards a little bit and now we're gonna bring it forward. So we're also gonna discover how people and environmentally focused innovations are using hemp and CBD and harnessing its exciting potential for this word again, for miracles. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll be totally transparent. I'm using the word miracles here because it tends to get a lot of attention. Oh, why is it a miracle? Why is it miraculous? So it's just that extra stirring of curiosity, really. So that uh, it gets more attention because we want it to get as much attention as possible. We're going to reflect on whether we in the UK risk being left behind, um, not just environmentally, but also hugely economically uh, behind other countries because they're forging a better future with CBD and hemp in a legal and open way. Um, you, you might already know that in America, most states have legalized uh, industrial hemp and CBD and so they're running ahead with some and fantastic marijuana. development and mar even marijuana. I think it's yeah. 51 of 52 states yeah. marijuana is legal in. So that's so we, we've got a bit of a backwards approach in this country which at this time of economic stress um, it, it's you know we can do better. So we're, we're going to discuss a bit about that and we're also going to find out how we as individual uh, consumers um, and possibly also people with an interest in horticulture, gardening, production, that sort of thing, find out how we can help to heal the planet just by buying and using hemp products. There are ways of doing it, and we'll show you a company that's uh, based in India who are doing a fantastic job at this. Um, uh, really excited to be presenting about them as well later. OK, so you will have an opportunity for your own questions and answers as well. And even if you do type them in the chat box, just because you might not remember it later, uh, we can see one of us can read it later and then respond while the other one's talking. OK, so that's roughly what we're going to attempt to cover this morning in the in the time frame that we've got. And let's move on to the next one. There we go. Uh, let's move back a bit because I don't want to miss this one. OK, so do you want to say something about who you are? Yeah, so I'm Paula Trafford or Paula Trafford. I go by either or name um, and I call myself a natural health practitioner. I'm a Pilates teacher, Cumnier teacher and multi-complementary therapist. And just to look, give a little bit of a backstory on why we got involved in CBD, um, our son, our youngest son had, uh, or yeah, I, I would say had um, really severe ADHD. And uh, the doctors said, the only thing that we can do is put him on Ritalin. And if you don't put him on Ritalin, uh, we're signing you off. So we said, right, we'll sign us off. We're not putting him on Ritalin because we, as natural health therapists, didn't believe to put him on Ritalin and seen so many zombie children on Ritalin that it's like, no, that's not for our child. So then it was a quest of what can we find? He wasn't sleeping well at night. He was very, very anxious, so getting more and more anxious 
with how he was being treated in school. And that was sort of spiraling. The more he got badly treated at school, the more he behaved and it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, um, uh, you know, it was it was it was really off the scale how stressful it was for the whole family and for him particularly he had really chronic uh, anxiety. Uh, so we found a natural product to help him sleep at night, which was uh, hops. And having twelve years of him not sleeping properly and trying everything we could possibly think of, from music therapy to lavender baths and grounding sheets, that this suddenly the hops worked and uh, had natural occurring melatonin in and our lives changed and I just thought all we need now is to calm him during the day so we looked at CBD it worked fantastically and then we realized right he's going to have to be on this for a long time to get him through school uh, so we then started buying it in bulk and then uh, some people were asking, friends are asking, oh, can I have some as well? So we then thought, well, let's just start a little small business. And that's uh, that's how it all started. Um, and uh, it's it's transformed my son's life because he now he obviously had a, a fear of relaxing with something called stress induced anxiety, which a lot of people have relaxation, re re induced. relaxation induced anxiety. And now he knows how to relax. And um, so that's how we got involved. You know, all that we're presenting today, there's, there's, there's not really any education about, about this. And that's what we really realized. We got scuppered for quite a few hundred pounds buying CBD um, that wasn't very good quality. The products weren't working. So again, and the, nobody was giving information. So we decided, okay, we'll become the people that we're looking for. Um, and that's how, how the whole thing um, has started. And believe me, when you've had 12 years of not getting to sleep well and not sleeping properly as a family, it's, it's a bit of a relief. So another reason for us to call it a miracle, uh, because it's, it, was, it was hard work yeah. for, for everyone. Um, and we're beyond that now, which is great. Uh, so I'm Craig. Um, I'm an energy medicine practitioner, EFT practitioner. I, I do uh, educational kinesiology, which is an advanced branch of applied kinesiology. And I'm also a stress reduction trainer. So it seems quite a natural arena to get into when we consider our mission. So our mission is to relax everybody, including ourselves. So that's our mission. And you'll find out over the next few slides why it's important to get us all relaxed. OK, this is us uh, at the fold um, in Bransford on market day um, selling our CBD and hemp products. And this is what we do with our CBD company. So we're, we're sharing the CBD and hemp products we're sharing therapeutic information. So it's not just information that, oh, that's nice to know. It's actually information that can result in therapeutic effects, particularly when it's calming and relaxing for people. And we also share empowering educative experiences, which means that uh, when we educate, we're educating because somebody somewhere along that line is going to be empowered by, by what we learn um, together. And we're doing this because stress is killing people, it's killing families and communities, cultures, societies, nature and the environment. You know, when we're relaxed, we're not cruel to the environment. We're not cruel to each other. We're actually, we're okay. We're okay in ourselves and we're okay with others and we're okay with nature and the world. So um, that's why our mission to relax everybody. Okay, and we, we've discovered that one of the ways to do that is to, or the best way to do it, is to invoke the natural innate relaxation response, which is the opposite of where most of us on the planet are at the moment. We, we, we're all continually switched on um, into our fight and flight system. So we're, we're advocating switching over much more often because we want to increase bliss and everybody loves kittens. Hence this picture <laughs> makes you feel a little bit blissful, unless you're a cat hater. So there's the molecular structure of CBD for you scientists out there. Um, possibly some of you will understand that. 
Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's great that um, science is supporting what um, we, our farmers, shaman, medicine women, have known for centuries, for millennia, that this plant's pretty damn good. Okay, so how do we do this? So we sell our CBD oils, balms, and hemp. Um, this is what we tend to, to um, sell mostly. People come to us for, for oils to help with their relaxation, um, pain, suffering. Um, anxiety and, and depression. Anxiety and depression. This is, this is zero. So it's called zero because it's hemp soap and it's 100% pure saponified hemp. And we met this guy who teaches farmers up and down the UK how to grow hemp in a permaculture organic style he won't put anything onto the earth or into the earth that he wouldn't put in his own body it's amazing and um he he makes this soap and it's fantastic so it washes anything from you to your dog to your clothes it's brilliant to your car as well um so you know we we did promote this guy for a bit so you know it's just one of the applications so why does it help to relax why does cbd help to relax well it activates what is known as our endocannabinoid system and that has an impact on all these bits of us i don't know if you can see that but bones muscles reproductive organs pancreas spleen brain lungs vascular system liver colon immune system just about every bit of us isn't it really mm -hmm. so it activates the endo the endocannabinoid system is that kind of relaxation aspects of us. In the brain, the main function of our endocannabinoid system is to help with decision making. Now, who couldn't, who couldn't do with a bit more support in, in making pretty good decisions in life? Um, it helps with cognition. It helps regulate our emotions, helps with our learning and helps with our memory. It also regulates body movement, anxiety, stress, fear, pain, body temperature, appetite, a sense of reinforcement, blood brain permeability and motor control. So it's pretty, pretty much everywhere, pretty all pervading our endocannabinoid system. And what the um, what cannabidiol does is it, it activates, it triggers what's already within us. It's this aspect of nature that is um, that is our friend. So why be karma? Do you want to give people a, a bit of a, an insight as to what happens when people are karma? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this put me on the spot here. Okay. Um, well, it was interesting. Why be karma? Uh, when we were in our kind of most uh, stressed place with uh with our son uh and the family we knew that we needed to be calm so we called ourselves trafford house calm center and our friends at the time used to laugh their heads off because uh <laughs> because it was the most kind of swirling chaotic home uh, but we we knew that by calling ourselves that um that we would start to embody being calm and we realized about 10 years ago, because uh, we've been doing our alternative practices for about 30 years at least each, so, yeah. um, that there was a stress epidemic going on and that, uh, you know, and that was that was at least 10 years ago. And, and it was like, well, everyone just needs to calm down. Everyone needs to calm down. And, and you, you know, if you can just imagine the whole planet just calming down. <laughs> calm down. If it just, if everyone just calmed down and just was, just took a breath and just relaxed, we would live on a different planet. And so that's why Be Karma, because we believe that that is the solution to what is going on on the planet, that the whole planet needs to calm down. And that's why we want to relax everybody, because we believe that, you know, through our own uh, life experience of living with, uh, with, two children with ADHD, or we call it ADHS now, um, superpower. superpower, we've taken the dis disorder out of it, but, uh, you know, living with that in, you know, 
the more stressed I got, the worse it got. Yeah. And yeah. the less stress I got, the better it got. So it, it, they've been my biggest teachers in ha- in how to calm down and the benefits of me being calmer as the mother um, and allowing the world to go on, but just flowing with it. Um, is that enough? On that, that's, that's lovely. I didn't <laughs> expect any of that. That's beautiful. Thank you. So, you know, um, just try it for yourself right now. Have a go yourself. Just take a, a, a deep breath and let it go. And it's really that simple, you know, just uh, allowing yourself to to drop into your heart or, you know, us to drop into our hearts rather than carrying everything up here, just dropping into this space. So we'll feel more in control of emotions and life, not just with one breath, obviously, it takes practice. Um, We increase the breathing capacity and you can start to hear your own thoughts and you can start to hear monkey mind and maybe even start to distinguish between what are helpful thoughts and what are repetitive writings on the wall from other people in the past or conditioning. Uh, You can rediscover your creative flow. We all have a creative flow. We all have an opportunity to align, be in alignment. Um, We have clearer communication with ourselves and with each other and we can enjoy better health as a result. So here are seven things that karma people do differently. They focus on finding their center. So when I said before, just breathing into your heart, sometimes it's just enough to put your hands on your heart or your hands on your heart and navel or on the navel, which is your center of gravity. And just finding your ability, your own ability to instantly slip into your body bring the mind down into the body. It's a really useful technique. They also express gratitude. Um, we, we do some work with, uh, with men's groups and um, at the moment going through a training course with Journeyman UK and Journeyman work with boys 13 to 18. Um, and one of their functions, the way that they check in, it's called pies and gravy. So they ask everybody in a casual kind of way, how are you physically? That's the P. How are you intellectually? How are you emotionally? And how are you spiritually? And obviously, like 13 to 18 is not necessarily always getting a a, a handle on that, are then sort of um, invited to to feel their own connection with nature and, and things greater than them, things bigger than them, you know, universe, things like that, just to get a, an idea of what spirituality might mean for them. And then the gravy bit is gratitude. So karma people express gratitude, you know, just want what you've got and really sort of welcome it and welcome everything and, and giving thanks for it. Um, they sleep six to eight hours, um, I think, You like about eight hours, don't you? I like about seven. Um, They socialize, so they unload and they're being with people. We were out dancing last night um, and it's it's just fun to dance and it's fun to connect. I mean, interestingly, that that term, um, what was it? Social social distancing? Mm. Yeah, no such thing. You can't be social and distance at the same time. It's um, physical distancing, okay? Um, They don't keep it together all the time. So um, the, the pressure to be perfect, it, it's, it's unnecessary. Mm. Uh, and they unplug and switch off. So that ability to just go, oh, I've got so many things I have to do. I've got so many problems to solve. There's loads and loads of stuff. I just put it over there for a minute and oh, relax and breathe. And I think just to say um, with the unplug and switch off, it doesn't mean, you know, getting drunk and... Uh, taking drugs and that sort of thing and over eating or just zoning out there's a difference to to that than yeah uh, because that can then you know it's a temporary thing where you feel better for those bits of time that you've done it and then you've got the hangover or whatever so it that will then cause more stress long term so it's unplugging and switching off you know great way to do that's just for walking nature yeah Mm. and yeah there's a difference between numbing out and, and actually switching off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is CBD? It's cannabidiol. It's a compound that's extracted from the 
agricultural or industrial hemp plant. It's not extracted from marijuana, so therefore it doesn't have um, psychotropic levels of um, THC, which is, you know, the, the psycho, um, psycho stimulant, if you like, uh, to be found in marijuana. So it doesn't have any of that. It has, or, or it has trace levels of that. In the UK, below 0.2%. Um, you're allowed to have in your hemp plants. This is what it looks like. And, and that bottom picture there, that is what we would like it to look like in the so-called barren land that we have in the UK. Now, fields of this, this is what it used to look like in the UK. There used to be fields that looked like this. And, uh, you know, cattle used to graze it. You can see it's slightly different looking to the marijuana plant. Does mm. the, basically, I always think of them as brother and sister um, and hemp being the brother. So hemp uh, is stronger than marijuana. Um, so if you've had a field full of uh, hemp and marijuana growing together within five years, uh, the hemp would have totally dominated the marijuana and the, the there would be no more marijuana in there. It's much, much stronger, which is why um, rope and things like that and mm. sales are made out of it. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, a, so it's like, kind of weed, isn't it? Yeah, it's a weed, yeah. And you can see it's it's a different, just a slightly different looking leaf to marijuana, which people mm. just people have seen, you know, seen all over the place on t-shirts and people's We're, we're assuming things. people yeah. have seen okay. all over. Well, they just have, they just, they've yeah. been around, but it's, it's a slightly different yeah. looking plant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the strongest natural fibre in the world is hemp mm. has over 50,000 different uses now if you just look at this infographic here you can see the different areas and this is without us really looking into it I mean we've seen a hemp battery that's really really thin it was like a sheet of paper but it was a battery yeah. made out of hemp yeah. amazing yeah. amazing stuff so all the possibilities and the potentials um, for developing hemp and using it as as a go-to resource for the whole of humanity right there in front of us um, it produces crucial resources food rope clothing paper housing material fuel so there's some rope we've, we've all seen that yeah and this which we haven't all seen is a hemp car door okay jay leno the fa the the famous chat show host over in america has got a video out on youtube that shows him thumping the bonnet like this of a red sports car made out of hemp. Can't make a dent in it. The reason he can't make a dent in it is because it's 10 times stronger than steel. And <clears throat> it, re it replaces the need for, for using fiberglass. It's incredible, incredible stuff. There's a very nice hemp dressing gown. This is a house made of hemp in Holland by the Hemp Collective. So you can see that's that's basically it's a, it's a, a standard house, really, in many ways, standard shape. Um, and it's yeah, it's made out of hempcrete and various hemp composites inside and outside. And here is another one who wouldn't like to live in that. How gorgeous is that one? Um, and the reason we picked this one out is because uh, it just I, th I think it, it's in Japan. This I'm not sure where they have a lot of earthquakes. And a hemp house is three times more structurally stable than concrete and its ability to withstand earthquakes. So very useful in those kind of zones for buildings and public buildings, etc. Here's some normal day-to-day -day stuff made from hemp plastic. And here is the world's first aeroplane made entirely from hemp. Even the upholstery, it seats four passengers, is made of hemp and it's fueled entirely by hemp and it's made by this amazing company now this might be one of the interesting technical um, things that occurs um, i'm going to click onto a video and uh, please let me know by raising your hands if you can see and hear it and if you can't we'll 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 bypass it and you can go to it later okay so we've clicked on there here they are. So this is the same company that make the hemp aeroplane. So I'll just widen that for you so you get a better look. So here are hemp fiber boards that you, no, you use. 
inside. You can't see that. Yeah. That way. Not the other way. Need to go the other way. That way. How's that? No, still oh. can't see it. You can't see it. Why don't you just open it? Expand it. Okay. Is it the size that you can't see? Or you just can't see it. It's not sharing. Oh, okay. Right. It's not sharing. All right. So in that case, um, I would say maybe look at it. Go to the top. Stop sharing. Another time. We'll stop sharing that one and we'll come back to us and we'll then go back to sharing this screen. Okay. So give us a thumbs up if you can see this one again. Can you see this one now? Yeah. Great. Okay. Anyway, go and have a look at hempearth.ca and see what they sell. They sell paddle boards, surfboards, all kinds of things. And they've also um, created beautiful uh, fiberglass products. Okay, so how does hemp save the environment for the next seven generations and beyond? Well, there's um, another video over at Rolling Stone magazine that gives, uh, it's one minute 30 long and it shows the processes shows the processes it, it looks like this this is the video again the links are the links are on here so you'll be able to um, look at this after afterwards through the process of phytoremediation or bioremediation so what they do is they draw up hemp plants draw up pollutants from the earth and this includes heavy and radioactive metals so they've used it in the area around Chernobyl to clean up the space around there. Um, they've used it in China to lift cadmium from the soil. Um, other places have lifted nickel and selenium, which are all environmentally destructive. And the interesting thing is that the toxins inside the plant, when they lift it, the plant will store it and then it can be used as a biofuel. So it's not waste. It's not, oh, suddenly we have to go and destroy these waste plants somehow. No, we use them. So the, the roots go really, really deep and they can get underneath. There is, there is potentially a bit of an issue with um, making sure that they don't take too many nutrients out of the soil. They do help to fix nitrogen. So, um, you know, th there's obviously some work to be done, um, but they need less water. I think 25, 75% less water than trees. And there's two crops, you get two crops a year. <coughs> two crops a year from, from hemp. So it removes, it, it can remove radioactive elements from soil and water. And that was known in 1998. So when they say, oh, there isn't a lot, you know, when you hear, um, oh, there isn't a lot of research done on this stuff, there's loads. And there's been research being, being done on the values of hemp and CBD for decades. Mm. So the research is there. It just needs speaking out. And if you go to our website, um, bcarmacbd.com, you'll find some links to some of the, the scientific research that's been done over decades. OK, so it can even clean those toxins that are leaching from landfills as well. So the waste is then turned into fuel, which is incredible. Now look at this little picture here. I love this picture. So here we are with our greenhouse gases. Hopefully you can see, can you see my cursor going up and down there? Okay, so yeah. these are the emissions from gasoline, from fossil fuels, right up here. If we use corn ethanol, we can go as far as, turn it into biomass, we can go as far as a 52% reduction. If we use sugarcane ethanol, biomass, we've got a 78% reduction. But if we use the, the cellulose and biomass from hemp, we have 86% reduction in greenhouse gases. Now, if, if that doesn't pique the curiosity and the, the interest of um, leaders, I don't know what will. Here's the gift, you know, here's the gift, accept it for your people give it to the people, you know? So, well, it's not that they can give it or take it. It's like, we'll decide whether we're going to use it or not, I think, in the end, um, because we're, you know, um, our interest is in um, ensuring that we are environmentally as sound as possible for at least the next seven generations. So we don't have any um, big oil companies lobbying us, you know, as individuals.
but governments do. So that's one of the pressures that they're under. So we can help support our, um, our people in positions of leadership uh, by bringing these kind of information to their attention. Okay, so I think that's just amazing that we can get an 86% reduction there in, um, in greenhouse gases. You know, so uh, let's find a way of, of letting people know at this COP meeting and, and things like that. Now, the Hemp Foundation in India, okay, that's another YouTube video, but, but we won't play that. It's fantastic. It has a hemp studio. And these are a company that are of particular interest to us because of several reasons. They're a non-profit and they found the uh, in the India Himalaya region, they found, um, I think there's, there's a region called Uta, Utakarand or Uttarakhand. It might be Uttarakhand. Um, where they've got acres and acres and acres of so-called um, waste soil, but they turn all that waste area into hemp growing land um, and they develop these beautiful fabrics. So it's not just, I know sometimes we think hemp, hemp is just this kind of flat personality-less fabric, a bit like rayon, but it's nothing like that. They make underwear out of it. They make all sorts of, and they make babies' clothes out of it. It can be really soft, can't it? It can, it can have all sorts of qualities to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just this sort of ragged thing that we've seen in the past. But importantly, it's, it's a great alternative to fast fashion. And fast fashion is one of the most environmentally destructive constructs that we have on the planet, even more so, I believe, than the petrochemical industry which, you know, that shocked me and it surprised me. But fast fashion is, is a killer. Um, and this company and companies like it that are springing up around the world um, offer a fantastic alternative. So it's well worth looking them up. Um, and maybe, I don't know, asking clothes shops to supply their stuff. What they do with this company is that they're, they're mobilising women-focused self-help groups because they noticed that in that region in the himalayan region um in north east india i think it is um they noticed that villagers were leaving so so the fabric was breaking down the social fabric was breaking down so they started growing hemp and they and they they went to women and asked them to develop groups and companies and and, and production facilities um based around hemp which they did successfully. And as a result, they brought that social coherence back to the area and the area is, is thriving, it's beginning to thrive. Now, what a fantastic lead company. You know, it's, it's a world leading company, this concept. They, they don't just work as a company to make profit, they actually build and generate thriving communities and a thriving environment. So they're, they're a, great, um, a great leader. And we loved them. They were Uttarakhand. Yeah. Uh, and what, the, what they say here is beautiful. Where others see barren land, we see acres of prosperity. Absolutely beautiful. It's just a matter of perception, perspective. So, you know, they, they've really, really helped their region and lots of, lots of lives. So there's, there's their contact at the bottom. It's hempfoundation.net. Let's say that again, hempfoundation.net. It's all one word. So for ourselves, um, we work with our products, information, and building a community of awareness around hemp because we want to support this triple bottom line economy, people first, planet, and then profit because we consider that that is the process that brings true prosperity. That's why we're so interested in, in hemp and mm -hmm. CBD, isn't it, would you say? Yeah, and I think, you know, we've talked a lot today about hemp and obviously the CBD is, is a, a little bit uh, of a branch off, as it were, mm. of, of the hemp plant. You can see that the hemp plant does so much more. And it's just to bring to your attention that the CBD in this country is all imported from either Europe, America or Canada. Um, we, we can grow hemp in this country, but the hemp 
uh, for CBD comes from the flower. The flower in this country has to be destroyed because it's not, we're not allowed to make CBD from the flower. So all CBD flour has to be destroyed and we have to import it from Europe, the States and Canada. So you can see that this, this is pretty much insanity that we're not allowed to make CBD in this country. Um, and, and that's something that we're really calling for to be changed because again, in the, in the climate that this country's in, if we could just make our own CBD from our own plants rather than destroying something that we've grown and then importing it from somewhere else, that's gonna really help to generate the economy. Mm. And, um, you, you know, we haven't really talked about, you know, so many other countries, Canada, you know, marijuana's legal. They, they have all, they even have cooking shows, cooking with marijuana and, 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 and they, they work out what CBD you need, what marijuana you need for illness. And, you know, it, there's doctors that are qualified in that. And uh, I'm one of the first people to be qualified to use CBD in my treatments. And my son was, uh, I think, one of the first children to be able to take CBD into school. So we, we are, we are at the very beginnings of this. And, you know, and we we're at the we're really sort of trying to kind of say hello cbd and hemp everyone um you know it's if i get ill or, or the family's got ill we you know and you've got pain we've used cbd my my uh, elder son uh, took cbd all the way through his gcse's and the teachers were saying just be like him you know, just be really relaxed because he was so relaxed and wasn't stressed going through his GCSEs and did really well because he wasn't stressed or, you know. He, he, it's not because he'd done his studies, was not, it? It wasn't because he'd done his studies at all because he hadn't. But um, so, you know, just to, to bring that into the conversation as well, that, uh, you know, CBDs, it's, it's really amazing and uh, it's really transformed our family. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, it can be used with animals as well. So um, just to bring that in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether it's the, the, the hemp or, or marijuana that's legal in Canada at the moment. I know, I know both are legal in many states. In, oh, no, it's the same in, the US. in Canada as well. Same in Canada, yeah. 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 So, so these countries have got, they've, they've got a run on us, basically. They're, they're well ahead and they know how important it's going to be to their economy. Um, and really, we're, we are in a, an economic mess globally at the moment, partly due to the pandemic, but also partly due to um, bad decision making and um, lobbying of, shall we say, um, comp lobbying by companies who don't necessarily have humanity's best interests at heart. And the way that we discover humanity's best interests is by asking humanity. You know, we each make that decision. So if we if we buy from these kind of companies, buy our products from these kind of companies, then we are using our individual um, capacity to to influence. So it's really important that, that that we do become conscious and aware buyers. And we go to um, uh, what they called when uh, uh, that we went to hemp hemp earth. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Shows and festivals, exhibitions. exhibitions. Yeah. So we we're, we're kind of following what's going on, and mm. they're they're all American and Canadian people in there, and they you know they're they're after they're giving stuff away for free because they know how much this is making, and they know that this country is not on it, yeah. and they're trying to get us. And you know, I've got emails coming through on a daily basis, you know, from the states, learn this and da di da, and this is our new product, and we're. And, and I'm, it just it breaks my heart really that I, I can see the potential because I can see it from other countries well, and they're so excited uh, because they've got that freedom which we just don't have in this country. We're kind of waiting for permission, aren't we're we? Waiting for time. permission, and uh, we can't even at this point, even as someone that is qualified to use CBD in treatments, I cannot say the benefits. So as an aromatherapist, I know Caitlin, you're an aromatherapist. You could say lavender does, you know, this, that, and the other. I can't say what CBD is. I'm not allowed to say. Um, so I've got my hands tied behind my back. I don't think that's just um, the, the the fault of politicians, though. To be honest, I think it's also the fact that um, you know at the beginning it was so unregulated that there were lots of wide wide boys and girls sort of sneaking into it because they wanted a bit of a gold rush. Well, we we you know we're looking beyond that. It's more than just a gold rush. It's it's an absolute 
um, it's a treasure rush mm -hmm. for the for the whole of humanity and for the environment. So, you know, we believe that this is the miracle technology that we're looking for. Um, it's here already. We already have an abundance of it. So let's get it going and let's get it growing. Um, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you like that one? That came out just just out of nowhere. Let's get it going. Let's get it growing. So if you've got any questions, I think I'm going to um, stop sharing the screen. We have more of these consciousness talks um, podcasts now throughout throughout the um, throughout the coming months. Um, there'll be lots of different topics. This has been um, CBD and the miracle plant um, hemp. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to having you on in the future as well. And if you do have any questions, you can contact us support at bkarmacbd dot com. And we'll we'll answer any of your um, well-being hemp and CBD questions. We can. If we can. <laughs> if we can't, we can signpost you to someone who can. <laughs>